Hey, what is up everybody? So I have had this RZ67 collection here at the studio from The Last Photographer for a while, and I finally decided to start um, playing around with it. They actually were using these uh, when I started working here with the Phase 1 P25 digital back, and that's what I decided to start with, even though I do intend to mess around with the film backs and all the other kind of things. So. Um, I have this ongoing thing where I tried to get it to work. I was using this body, even went to a camera store to have them help me out. Didn't work. I got home, um, turned it back on, and everything started working for me. So I went out to dinner, took a couple photos, cool. Next day I decide I'm gonna head to the bike shop and mess around with it a little more, maybe do some bike portraits if anyone's available. Thing won't turn on. I'm starting to think it's just um, that the battery switch is, or the power switch on the camera body is finicky, because the Phase 20, 25 back is working just fine. So anyways, I switched everything over to this body, another Pro 2D. Everything worked, went to the bike shop, took some portraits, and or took one portrait, came out great, and then I kind of just messed around hand-holding it at the shop. It's not the kind of thing this camera would be made for. These are, you know, you can see all the bulk here, much more of a studio camera. But I just kind of wanted to try it out. And the highest ISO this thing has, the most sensitive, is 800. Anyways, even at 800, the images still looked good. See for yourself. So the next plan for this, I need to switch. There is a mat underneath the focusing screen on these. And this body didn't have it in there. So I need to switch that over, figure out how to do it. I know these... Um, come out and then I think the mat is up underneath there because with the fact that the back rotates and the fact that the P25 is not as big as 120 film, it's actually really hard to frame because you know you are, this is an SLR, so you're just looking through a mirror and out the lens, you're not seeing the actual digital image like you are with a mirrorless. Anyways, more to come on these, a lot more video I'm gonna be doing with the RZ67, like I said, digital and film, and just kind of a whole entire thing, studio, location, whatever. So this is an interesting one. I'm photographing a piano delivery. Just kind of circling the building because they didn't know where it was going to be. It's looking to me like it's got to be in the front in this open plaza. They told me I need to file for some kind of parking pass, visitor's permit. Since I'm riding my bike, I didn't do that. Um, made me think there was going to be some kind of ceremony with this but there's nobody around nothing's blocked off for special parking so I'm 10 minutes early as I like to be for a photo gig but it's gonna be interesting is this just gonna be a the physical act of people unloading a piano <laughs> that's it I have no idea you know it's a university so there's always you know donors and stuff like that and they want to make sure those people get recognized Huh? We'll see. 855. No sign of a truck that can hold a piano just yet. Piano delivery. Photograph done. Now I'm taking a USB drive to my lab to get some prints made. So I was getting those prints made for a show and that is what I'm gonna show here next, what was going on with this whole framing process. All right, so I have some photos that are going into a hospital where they'll be for sale. So I've got to frame them up. Of course, I waited till the last minute. It's um, almost 12.30, I need to be there by one. It's right around the corner, so drive time is nothing. But I have to wire hang them, and I couldn't find any frames with that, so I have to attempt to build my own. So we'll see how this all goes. That didn't enjoy the process. This is the best trick I've ever learned. When you want to mat something, you put the tape on face up. Then you can see what you're doing. I'll show you here in a second. If you have a problem getting your stuff straight, now you're looking at what you're doing instead of trying to tape it on the back like I did for years. I'm actually gonna turn off the GoPro while I do this so I have both hands and I can see clearly because cheaper mats, 
in frames. These are nice prints. Are hard to line up sometimes. Yeah. Half an hour left. Not bad for my first time ever, as long as they don't fall off the wall, right? I don't know. All right, it's five till. We're just gonna walk down there. So, yeah, if anyone else is on time, then they'll be doing their thing, so hopefully I won't be too late. I probably should have looked at where we're supposed to drop this off. Let's go ride bikes. It's nice out today. Another thing I'm working on for the channel is talking about the Canon EOS R8. It is this small full frame sensor camera and it has the exact same sensor as the much more $1,000 more expensive R6 Mark R6 Mark II. So I got this, it's coming up on a year. The thing I love to do with this camera is when I'm on bike rides or going to stuff, I just basically throw it with its strap over my back and I take it everywhere with me. It's been really great basically because of the size. The reason I initially bought it was as a backup for pro work and I have my friend Dave helping me out. So he's been, you know, I've been either using this one when I'm on vacation so he could use the R5 for professional work or if we're double booked, we could each take one. But the, the side thing has been that I've just been loving using it just for like normal, everyday stuff. I have the 28 uh, f2.8 pancake lens on here, so you can just see what a small package this whole thing is with an amazing sensor. I mean, this is, uh, this will do 4K 60 down sampled from 6K for video, but I mostly use it for stills. And since it's hobby stuff, I don't need the 45 megapixels of the R5 that I'm recording on right now. So I've really enjoyed this, using this camera a lot. And I'm gonna have a whole video about what it's like to try and use it as a professional, because there are some negatives and some kind of downsides to this camera. Um, so I kind of want to get into that. So look for that in the future. Single speeding to Jeff's show is sounding like a worse idea right now. <laughs> I had my rain jacket on earlier for warmth and now I'm just wearing a windbreaker. Uh. So yeah, on this night after riding in the rain, I was going to see my upstairs tenant Jeff's band Mistletoe play at Jilly's in Akron. And yeah, I got really wet on the way home. But again, using the R8, you know, just a camera that I could carry with me on the bike and then into a bar. That night I was shooting the Sigma Art Lens. Uh, it's an F1.4 and I adapt it with an EF to RF mount to this camera because for like dark situations like that, I love having the F1.4. Um, as always, there's more of these photos on my Flickr and on Instagram and all that stuff, which are linked below. Just showing a couple here real quick. So one of the other big projects this week was stuff I was doing for the University of Akron. For their 100th anniversary of homecoming, they had some stuff made up and they're entering it into a design competition. So I needed to do like classic product shots of some of that, a couple tabletop things you could see here. And then they had this, these big displays, these big historical markers. And with those historical markers, they wanted, um, not only the photo, but they wanted somehow to show what it looked like from all sides. So me and Dave played around for a while and tried to figure out the best way to do that. They were thinking a camera going around it, but then it would show so much of the studio and all that. And if I wanted to erase that, it would be a ton of work in post-production. What we ended up doing is for my live streams, I have this little like Lazy Susan device, and that's so I could move one of my monitors. I built a thing so it, you know, with some boards so it rotates. Dave had the idea to grab this we put a board on it the size of the display, and then we were trying to figure out how we could rotate it 
and we realized, let's just do stop motion. And um, so yeah, Dave's actually standing behind it, slowly turning it while I just keep pressing the shutter button at an interval that seems to go with how he was turning it. They were really happy with it. So it took us a while to figure it out, but we got there and uh, I was really happy with the result and so were they. So that is it for this video. I am taking off next Tuesday for a week-long job in Boston. It's gonna be a really interesting one. We're gonna be shooting at a couple locations, Boston, Rhode Island, drone, video, stills for a company. So there's gonna be a whole video um, about that trip. Um, like I said, I'm working on the RZ videos and the R8 videos and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of photography stuff, which we have a lot more of on the way.